How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? And all will see how great, how great is our God.
come forth with prayer and Sister Carolyn to come forth with the scripture at this time.
And I'm not going to say let's guess at what it is, but one of the most powerful weapons we have in the world only weighs about three pounds. And it sits between our ears. And it is our brain, commonly known as the mind. I heard somebody say, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. And the Bible tells us in James about an unstable mind. So we're going to come today just to ask and talk about what we won't ask. We're going to tell you that you need to make up your mind. That is the topic for this afternoon. Make up your mind. James 1 and 8 tells us that he who is and has a double-minded, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Some of the problems from the beginning is that you just can't make up your mind. But it's time to make up your mind. A double-minded man is like a man that's sitting on the fence. He has one leg on one side of the fence in somebody's yard and one leg on the other side of the fence in somebody else's yard. And he's sitting there trying to see which yard he'd rather be in. I used to hear someone say back in the olden days, we always talk about those olden days, a double-minded man is like a, there's a fish in the water that is black and white. Black on one side and white on the other. And when he swims with the black fish, he swims black side up. And when he swims with the white fish, he swims white side up. What are we trying to say? He's unstable. He's not sure where he wants to be. So the moral of the story is in order to begin to use the most powerful weapon you have, which is your mind, God gifted you with a mind to make choice, a mind to make um, not only choice and decisions, he gave you a mind that you can either use, you can build, you can grow on, or you can sit there and let it die. But you have to decide first which direction you're going in. Joshua 24, 14 and 15 says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him. And serve him insensitively and in faithfulness. Put away the guards that your put away the gods that your father served. This was these are the uh, fake gods or or the gods, the uh, token gods, if you want to call them, or the gods that some built when Moses was up on the mountain. He said, put away those gods, the ones that you dealt with before the river of Egypt. This is after they were, you know, Pharaoh. They got out of the land of Egypt. And now they're out there trying to make it to the promised land and they're still not sure whose God they are serving. You've got to make up your mind. And if it is evil in your eyes, the scripture says to serve the Lord that I'm talking to you about today, then choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. And if God be God, then serve God. And if Baal be God, then serve him. But make up your mind. But just know this afternoon, we need to be saying for me and my house, and you need to be saying for you and your house, you're going to serve the Lord. Yeah. No one ever lived in my house or passed through my house that did not know that I chose the Lord God as my Savior. Yes, the roads might have gotten rough and the going might have gotten tough, but there was no doubt in my mind who I believed in. We could spend the whole week talking about the natural things in life which the mind plays a part in, but we're not here this afternoon to talk about the natural things. We're here this afternoon to talk about the spiritual things. We have a God that has power and sits on high. You just got to make with your mind whether you're going to let him be your Lord. I don't know about you, but I came to Jesus years ago just as I was. I was weary, I was worn, and I was sad. But the songwriter said, I found in Jesus a resting place, and he has made me glad. I'm not glad because of what's going on around me, but I'm glad because I found Jesus. And songwriter said, if you got Jesus, that's enough. I love that old song. There's always going to be somebody talking about you, but you don't have to worry about that. What you need to know is, do you know Jesus? And I learned as I'm traveling this way, there's many folks that would rather have silver and gold. Many folks 
would ever have, would rather have riches untold. Many folks would rather do anything but serve the Lord. But you got to make up your mind which way you are going. <clears throat> Philippians 2 and 5 says we got to let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's the mind that I want. Amen? That mind to do the will of his Father. We are for God also. After Jesus came, lived, died, and rose again, he was exalted by his Father. And that's why now there is no other name on the earth, in the earth, whereby we can be saved other than the name of Jesus. Or because he did the will of his Father. As I said earlier, the mind is a powerful weapon. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. With all this being said, we must understand that as powerful as the mind is, you still can control some things that your mind are, are thinking. As I said, you can make a choice. As I said, you can think on good things. You can think on bad things. You can think about better ways to do things, or you can think about shortcuts. A lot of people like to take shortcuts. But with all of this being said about the mind, Romans 12, 1 tells us, and it lets us know when you read the in New International Version, the Bible still says, and it's, it's saying to you this afternoon, it's saying, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, yeah. that you present your bodies, but not just present your bodies as a li living sacrifice, which is holy and acceptable unto God in your reasonable service, but it's saying, don't be conformed to the pattern and the ways of this world. But you gotta be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You wanna get things right? You wanna get things better? How many of you know that all you gotta do is make up your mind? I'm not going back. I'm not going back. Amen. My mind is made up. And I'm going to see this through. Then if you make up your mind, you will be able to see magnificent things happen. You will be able to see miracles performed. Although the mind is a powerful thing to waste, we must do as the scripture says. We must set our mind on things that are above and not only on the things that are here on earth. A lot of us don't see anything other than the few years we have here, but just a few more weary days and this life is going to be over. And only what you do for Christ is going to last. And you want to know where you're going to spend eternity. There's nothing like peace of mind and knowing where you are going to spend eternity. Uh -huh. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, You keep, the Lord will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him and who trusts in him. I don't care what you're going through. There can be peace in the midst of the storm. Peace in the midst of confusion. The Lord will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind on him. Lord, I can't do this by myself. I can't make it by myself. And I'm going to stop worrying about it. But Lord, I got my mind on you and where you're taking me. We must keep in mind that the Bible tells us in Corinthians 5 and 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. A lot of people are going to church and they're going to go the hell out of the church because they're not new creatures. Because new creatures... If Christ came into your life, and when you accept Christ in your life, a change, a change must, must come over you. Right. A change will come over you. And the first thing that's going to change is your mind. Amen. You may still do things, but you will no longer think they are right. You will not call wrong right and right wrong. Amen. Matthew 22 and 37 says, and, and, and it said unto him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Loving God is not as hard as it's cracked up to be. Trusting in yourself is where the problem comes in it. But if you love the Lord with all your heart, he will provide for you. He will make the crooked places straight when you trust in the Lord. Jeremiah 17 and 9 tells us the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? A lot of people see things that other people do and say, I'd never do that. Well, you really don't know what you'd ever do. Because the Bible lets us know the heart is deceitfully wicked. It's sick. Who 
can understand it. Nobody knows what the heart has in, in it except for the Lord. God knows the heart. And that's why we used to sing the song, while I'm down here singing, Lord, search my heart. While I'm down here praying even, Lord, search my heart. While I'm down here singing and ushering and while I'm ministering even and while I'm playing on the organ or the drums, Lord, search my heart. Why? Because only you know, Lord, whether I'm right and only you know, Lord, whether I'm wrong. So search my heart, Lord. Hallelujah. When I think everything is wrong around me and everybody else is wrong, sometimes it doesn't say, Lord, search my heart. And if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to get rid of it before you get rid of me. Hallelujah. If I don't know what's down there, then I don't know what I'll do. Hallelujah. Sometimes God uses people in the strangest ways. And I believe that God used Michael Jackson. Yeah, I think he used Michael Jackson. Because Michael Jackson said, if you want to make the world a better place. Anybody know that song? I'm starting with the man in the mirror. And I'm asking him to change his ways. And once the man in the mirror changes his ways, then things will get better around the man in the mirror. So we know that we have to make a choice. What are you going to do? Don't blame your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, your kids. Start with the man in the mirror. Because a lot of times he's the problem. Amen. Sometimes I think some of us are not, um, I just think sometimes we, we, got to, we forget where we, we've come from in God. I'm talking about in God. When we first got saved, how many of y'all know, and especially if you ever been, I don't know how many of you ever got the Holy Ghost, but forget even the Holy Ghost. When you first got saved, you looked at your hands, and your hands looked new. You looked at your feet, and they did too. And all you wanted to do was go tell somebody that I met the master. When we accept Christ, we can't be confused. We are baptized in the Spirit. You are baptized into the body of Christ. And if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, then you don't have Christ. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. That's what Romans 8 and 10 tells us. And the Holy Spirit tells you, don't go over there. Don't do this. Don't say that. You better think about it. But sometimes we ignore the spirit. But it's urging us. And what it's telling us in these last days, get right with God and do it now. Hallelujah. Because we're running out of time. Amen. Life is, for some of us, death is running closer than it ever did before. And that's all right to know that because it's a fact. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. You didn't come here to stay. But there is eternity. And it does not, you know one thing I always believe, and I always will believe, there is eternity. And you're going to spend that somewhere. But what I love about it, even though sometimes I dig it up here, our legs are getting hard and our back is hurting. Amen. The outward man, he is. He is. He's being crushed every day. Yeah. He's dying. The other man is dying, but the inward man, yeah. the man on the inside, yeah. is being renewed every day. That's what the Bible says. He's being renewed every day. Hallelujah. So I'd like to say um, in, 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 in my conclusion, Philippians 4 and 8, it has a conclusion to the whole matter. You got to make a choice. Choose ye this day, but also choose this. A lot of y'all like to be caught up in a, I used to like to be caught up in a lot of mess too. It was interesting. Amen? But I learned that nobody don't ask you to help them no more. Don't offer. Amen? <laughs> Amen? 
If the Lord don't lead you, don't offer. Amen? Why? Because it's so much going on in Philippians 4 and 8 tells us a conclusion to help a lot of us get out of the mess we in. It says, finally, brothers, Philippians 4 and 8, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honorable, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatever is commendable, if there be any excellence, if there be anything you think about, think on these things. Think on these things. Stop thinking about what happened on yesterday. Stop thinking about what your mother did, what your father did. Stop thinking about what somebody did to you. Think on these things. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And the Bible says, whatever happens to me, God knows. And then there's nothing that happens that God don't know. So we got to learn how to praise him in our trials. Praise him in our sickness. Praise him when things don't look bad. There's a few stories in the Bible. Also, I'm going to talk about in the conclusion real quick. There's a few stories in the Bible. And one of them, I believe, was about the lost, the lost coin. Anybody know that story? Yeah, it was a coin that was lost. Okay. And there was also a lost sheep in the Bible talked about. And then there was the prodigal son. He was lost, right? Yeah. But the good thing about all of these losses that the Bible talked about, all these parables, anybody know the best thing about it? They were all found. You're not too far out to be found. You're not too deep in what you're doing to come out of it. These were put in the Bible as parables to let you know. And guess what? You were never lost to God because God knew what you were doing and where you were all the time. He was just waiting on you to come on home. Say, come on home. Hallelujah. You out there feeling that you don't have hope. There is a hope. The best thing about those stories is everybody the penny was found, the sheep were found, and the son came home. So you're not so far out there that you can't return. Return! And know that the Bible tells us. Also choose ye this day who you're going to serve, but it also tells us in Romans 10 and 9, if you're listening today, there is a way that seemeth right to a man. But the end thereof is death. So you don't want to end up in death. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, chapter the ninth verse, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him, Jesus, from the dead. And he rose again on that third morning. He got up out of the grave. He took, he went to hell. You know y'all went, he went to Hades. And he took the, the keys of death from the devil. Amen? Yeah. The sting of death is you feel that that's it. It's no more. But Jesus rose and he lives today. Yeah. And if you accept him, you can live. You can have peace. So once you accept Jesus, make a choice today. Wherever you are, make a choice. Choose ye this day whom you shall serve. But I offer you Jesus. We offer you Jesus. And if you will accept Christ right where you are, you will be and are, not will be, you are saved. Amen? And we're grateful for you being saved. Why? Because the angels are rejoicing. So we're rejoicing. So we clap our hands. So we say thank you, Lord. We know that God, what God did for us, he can do for you. And that's why we offer him to you today. Choose ye this day. And let the Lord be the one that you choose. What's so funny about it, if you really make this choice, you will be coming back telling us how good it was and how glad you were that you finally gave over. Time to choose. And 
Yeah.